Hey everyone, uh, Pastor Shannon here, and I have with me Blair Zant. Say hi. Hey everybody. I'm super excited to interview her because Blair, who is the Associate Director for the Center of Congregational Excellence for the North Georgia Conference of the United Methodist Church. That does not fit on a business card, it's, but that's what she is. It's ridiculously long. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. She was part of the very, very, very start of trying to plan out holy mischief as a movement and putting some teeth behind it. So one day before Christmas, we had a whiteboard and a lot of sticky notes, and something was born out of that. It was a pretty amazing. And one of the things I loved about that was... Um, Every so often we would stop and we would just listen for the Holy Spirit and listen for just a nudge. And when we got confirmation, we would continue on and on. So I asked her to um, pray for this movement and to consider doing some holy mischief herself. So I wanted to introduce her. She is part of a clergy couple and she and her husband have um, a story of holy mischief that Blair would like to share with us. So go ahead. Well, first to the Holy Mischief Nation, I'm so glad for all that you are doing. This is such a time of innovation and so much of the rules and constraints of what it means to be in Holy Mischief and in relationship with the Holy Spirit, they're all gone. They're all remade. This is a chance for us to create new things and the Holy Spirit has been unleashed. So thank you guys all. It's been inspiring to see your stories and your testimonies and to hear your creativity as you care for your neighbor and shelter in place and acknowledge social distancing. But Shannon, you and I are just talking about how instantly everybody just turned on a dime to love their neighbor and to look for opportunities to create holy mischief. So it's been awesome. So thank you for letting me share a little bit in our corner. And to you, Shannon, thank you so much for being like the spearhead of all this. It's been amazing to be part of this movement and this journey. And yes, um, whiteboarding and sticky notes are my love language. So yes. thank you for letting me love you with my yes. love language. And <laughs> like, it was amazing that day to see what God put on the board. It's been truly incredible to see where you have followed the Holy Spirit after that day. So thank you from all of us. Thank you. Everyone give applause. Everyone put your like praise hand emojis in the comments. Like this is amazing to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I asked you on. Now tell us oh, a story about Holy Mystery. <laughs> Absolutely. So like many of you, we have gone through several stages of counting the losses of this sudden change in the way we do church and we live life. And um, when we found out that we had to cancel church, that was really, or not cancel church, we had to close the church building and move online and move kind of to, you know, a different way of being church. One of the ways that like insult got added to injury is the next day, my husband got a call that all the signs, the yard signs that he had ordered to hand out to the congregation to help them publicize Holy Week, they were ready. They were ready and paid for. Um, and we live in a really pedestrian neighborhood in the church. So that's a, that is the biggest way that we help um, celebrate and we help kind of promote the church and the work of the church to our community. So it was just a huge crushing blow. And we stopped and we took a breath and we asked the Holy Spirit, what do we do with this? So the Holy Spirit laid it on Will's heart uh, to recreate them. So we actually went down to the basement and we grabbed our house paint because we either have like kiddo oh. washable paint yeah. or we have house paint. Like that's the options in our house. So we grabbed house paint and we just painted all the signs white. We just painted them all white. And then we got the kids involved and we got magic markers and Sharpies and, and that's when we bust out the finger paints and we just remade them. And we were really prayerful about what we should say. And I think a lot of the language coming out of that time was, oh, Easter is canceled, Easter is canceled. Mm. And we were like, you know what? Doesn't matter where we meet or how we proclaim it, or even if we, we proclaim it, Easter always happens. Easter always happened. Yeah. The first Easter was proclaimed in the dark with no one to witness it until a few were called to the tomb. So it happened without anybody else noticing or proclaiming it until the first witnesses did. So one, of the like I said on, one of the things I said on Sunday uh, during prayer time, we truly understand what it means when the rocks and stones cry out now because yes. we kind of felt like, wait, yes. we got to cry out now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think uh, this is so an aside between you and me and everybody watching. 
this is going to feel, it's not going to feel like Easter the way we've known it. I think it's going to help us appreciate Holy Saturday a lot more than we've ever appreciated before. I think that's actually going to become a sacred time for, for me and for our family this week is what Holy Saturday means. So knowing all that, and yes, amen, um, we decided that the, the call that we were going to place on the signs was Easter always happens. And so that's what we did. And we handed out blank signs, uh, kind of painted signs to everybody who wanted one, socially distant. They came and picked them up and took them back to their houses. And we've gotten all these pictures back from church members all over the neighborhood with their signs that say Easter always happens. And it's with different images of Easter that are meaningful to them and their kids and their neighbors and their yards. And it's just been amazing to see once again how church has become church in a whole new way proclaiming an Easter that we have come to truly appreciate in a whole new way. So I love that Easter. story. And um, so once we post this video, uh, you'll add some of those pictures in the comments so we can see what those yes. signs look like. Yes, absolutely. That's Scroll really below. Really and I'd love to invite anybody who's watching, how is Easter always happening? How did Easter always happen in your neighborhood, in your church? Post your pictures and your comments and your stories below because I want to hear what you guys are doing too, how God's breaking loose. But yeah, there's our story of holy mischief. I love it. I love it because it's repurposing something um, yes. and it's creating something and making it new again, which is embodying the gospel message. Um, yes. And taking something that could have had a really, really grieving, grieving death, like these signs, we can't use them for their original purpose. They were yeah. going to have to die. And they did. And were resurrected in something even more inspiring for us. So it's the story of Easter, right? Nice. Well, so yeah. we, that gives me an idea. When we started the Holy Mischief Lenten Challenge, we ordered some signs that I thought were just going to say Holy Mischief, but they actually said Lenten Challenge on them. And I thought, well, that, gosh, you know, we can't use these after Easter. But now we have the idea that we can. We can repurpose this somehow and, um, and do a little Holy Mischief with our signs. I love awesome. it. Awesome. Okay. I want to hear what you do. So, the, which leads me to my question for you. Uh -huh. What is next for the Holy Mischief Movement? Um, we know that after Easter, we're going to have to, we're going to get the chance to rethink everything about what church is and how we live it out. So, what are you thinking for yes. Holy Mischief? Well, so going into, into Lent, we ha I had a very organized a uh, set of 40 challenges and a devotional that went with every single one. And as soon as we started sheltering in place, most of the challenge, not most, but a, a good number, we couldn't do anymore because they involved uh, not having that social distance. So we redid some of those and some people are doing those as they see fit. But what I've seen that I think is beautiful is the organic nature of holy mischief, which is truly the process that so I think the heart. you need to follow. Yeah. So yeah. Um, early on after I had met with you, Blair, I, I talked with someone else and, I, and she said, well, describe this to me. I said, well, it's, you know, the mysterious disruption of God, God's love in action. And she said, okay, well, how do you do that? I said, well, you know, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. It's acts of kindness. And she said, stop, don't say that anymore. It, it's not easy. If it were easy, everyone would do it. There's a process here. What is it? Uh, I said, oh, well, you need to start with prayer so that you can see where the Holy Spirit is leading. That's what's happening now. Everyone is praying. They're praying for the healing of the world. They're praying for their neighbors, the people that are lonely, the people that need connection. And they're listening to the Holy Spirit. And then they're doing something that is what I call now authentic activation. They're, they're doing something mm that's driven by the Holy Spirit that is authentic and that is meaningful and purposeful to both parties. Both parties get mm. something very meaningful out of it. And then they're moving into the next two things, which is to habitize that, to do that repeatedly over and over as a spiritual practice. Yes. And they're sharing that story to inspire others. And this is happening not just um, in the holy mischief realm, but it's also happening worldwide. If you go on YouTube, you see celebrities doing this. You see John Krasinski has been doing this, um, you know, good I am, news. I am living for him today. Like he that is saving kid. my life today. He and Emily Lentz I was and Lindsay Miranda. Oh, 
sobbing and singing. So good. It was <sighs> amazing. Um, I was like, yes, he gets holy mischief. And what I loved, yes. this is what I loved. He, he, he made a, a, he brought in those people that were, um, you know, taking his copyright and his brand. Yes. And then yes. he made fun of him and he said, but that's what I want you to do. That's what it is. And that that's I was what like, it is. yes, yes, that's what yes. It is. take this, own it for yourself. Yes. And then, so, um, there's, I, there's still an unknown about next steps, but I think that this organic nature of what's happening and people really wanting, they didn't realize how much they needed connection until it was taken away. Um, yeah. So I think people are on the other side of this are going to crave connection. And I think giving people opportunities, um, not just to be part of a program, but to be part of connecting with one another, I think is going to be that next step in this. Uh, so I envision, uh, you know, pop-up parties and gatherings where people connect and then deploy out to do holy mischief. Whatever that looks like in the future, that's what I see happening. That is beautiful. I'm really That's excited beautiful. about it. Um, what it. What it resonates for me immediately is how this week is going to make us newly appreciate Holy Saturday. Mm. I, think, I think moving beyond this week, suddenly we turn our eyes to Pentecost. And not just a yeah. day on the calendar that we get an excuse to bring out red as the color but as truly a day of celebrating the birth and rebirth of what it means to be the body of Christ and the mm. dispensation of the Holy Spirit, like when it was set loose on the world and how can we truly be a people of Pentecost this year as holy mystic makers. You saying that I am now more excited about Pentecost than I ever have been. And I'm Yay. always excited about Pentecost because it's one of right. my favorites. Yes. So that's awesome. I'm looking we'll forward to that. It. Maybe we, I will put together a holy mischief Pentecost. I don't want to call it a challenge. I want to call it something else. Mm. Um, so if someone has listened this far and you have an idea about what to call it, will you let me put know? In the comments. In yes, the comments. In the comments. Yes. That would be. And I'll, I'll go to my whiteboard. I'm to my whiteboard and my sticky notes. Where's so the sticky note? Out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it has been wonderful talking to you and I am Same. so thankful for the encouragement, the leadership that you have provided. It has been wonderful. And um, I'm excited to go paint some signs. Amen. So everyone, Amen. bye. And it keep sharing those stories. We love it. Thanks, everybody. Blessings, especially in Holy Week. Thanks for everything.